Hey guys, it's Software Engineer 101. Today we're going to cover the basic data types in C Sharp. And before we hop into that, I uh, wanted you guys to see my website. Um, check it out sometime if you got some free time. SoftwareEngineer101.com. Uh, I have some basic stuff in here that just covers like how computers understand what we program, um, some of the basics of programming that's common in all languages. Um, I, I think it's worthwhile. Take a look at it. Um, I'm slowly building up my C Sharp library. Uh, currently building out the tutorials on C Sharp. Uh, so if you don't mind, let's get started. Uh, open up your Visual Studio and create a new project. Search up here for a console. And we want to do the console app for the .NET framework, not this one. Once you have that selected, click next. Name it whatever you want. I'm gonna name mine data types two. Click the latest .NET framework. And then I liked having this check, place the solution project in the same directory. Makes it easy to store and go through things on the file system. Once you have all that set, click create. So, as in my previous videos, we covered the install Visual Studio and what all that entails. And over here on the right is your Solution Explorer. Um, this is our solution at the top here. This is the project. And this is our class, program.cs. As you can see here, program. So, the static void main is the main method or function in this solution project. Uh, <clears throat> we're going to go through here and basically type out comments, get used to writing comments, and then different types of data types in C-sharp. Alright, so click in here in your static void main and create a space in here. And let's do two forward slashes, and this is how you do one line comments in C-sharp. You can do as many as you want. Things like that. Um, if you want to do multiple line comments in C Sharp, you can do forward slash asterisk. You don't even need these, it'll auto populate that, but. And then you can type whatever you want here. So there's that. Um, let's get into writing our first variable. We're going to cover integer first. So Feel free to type the same comments I do. Uh, it's probably good that you do just for memory of uh, what's all included in each of these uh, data types. So first one we're going to cover is integer. It's a whole number. Uh, it can range from negative 2 billion. It's a pretty crazy number. I have it up on the other screen here. To positive that number. I'm gonna... And the size of it is four bytes. And this is how you declare an integer in Visual Studio. Int, whatever you want to name it, I'm going to name it my int, and equal, let's say, 10. So a couple things about Visual Studio. Um, anytime that you're using a variable that is not declared or used elsewhere in the um, class, it will do the little green squiggly just letting you know it's not used. It kind of helps you if you have a large project and you have a bunch of variables you don't use anymore. Um, so just ignore that for now. And then you notice how I capitalized the second part of the name. This is called camel case. It's very common in programming. It's kind of it looks better and is easier on the eyes than something like this or this. We don't want to do that. Let's see how auto put it for me. So you only capitalize things at the beginning for like <clears throat> classes or objects, but not for variables. Just kind of a basic coding standard that's pretty commonplace around the world. Alright, next data type. 
is going to be a double. Doubles are floating point numbers. You can store up to 15 decimal digits, I believe. And their size can be pretty big compared to the others, so they are 8 bytes. And the way you declare those in C Sharp is double. I'm going to name it my double. And I'm going to say equals two point and some numbers. And you have to put a D at the end. Make sure you do your semicolons after each line of executable code as well. After the double, let's cover the long. Um, long is a whole number and can range from a pretty big number. Uh, it's, it's over a trillion, so there you go. This size is also eight bytes. And the way you declare these in C sharp is long, my long equals, there you go. Declare long. Next up is a float. There are fractional numbers. You can store six to seven decimal places, and their size is four bytes. The way you declare one is just typing float. My, my float, 12 point, uh, some numbers, and an F, semicolon. All right, after that, let's cover the Boolean. True or false, they can be one of the other. Um, their size is smaller, since it's not a, oh my gosh. Sorry about that. All right, their size is smaller. Uh, they are just one bit. If you don't understand these sizes, just go to my website and look at the basic ones and zeros and I'll cover the, the sizes. And the way to declare a Boolean in C Sharp, bool. It's common to, instead of just saying my bool this time, it's pretty standard programming to have it be like an is something. So when you're reading this variable later on, without the bool next to it, you'll know that it is a bool. So I'm going to just say is YouTube cool or something. I'm going to say it true. And next up, we are going to cover the character, as I like to say, just char. Uh, characters are, they store single letters or characters, and they're surrounded by single quotes. They are, their size is two bytes. Here's an example. Char my char equals a. Alright, last one. We're going to cover a string next. String store sequence of characters surrounded by double quotes. And their size is two bytes per character. So, string, my string equals double quotes. Let's say this is our custom string and semicolon. So there you have it. We've declared all these basic data types in C Sharp. Uh, next, I want to cover just putting these into print statements so you can actually see them be printed out in a console window. All right, so down below here, click enter a couple times. Also, you can control scroll in and out of your code if you like it further out. I kind of like it in between. Also, on your scroll bar over here, right click and scroll bar options. Click uh, 
do wide or medium here it really expands this it kind of shows you what you're looking at when you're scrolling up and down your code all right so back down here let's do these print statements so I like to comment everything on my code so here we are printing all of our it seems tedious commenting everything, but if you ever program something or develop something with thousands of lines of code, it can get real complicated and things can get confusing if you're not well organized. So you might as well start off right. So we're gonna do console dot right line. Double quotes in here. That's what you call them. And in the double quotes, we're just gonna say this is my C sharp console program. Alright. <coughs> I don't want to retype console right line and the parentheses and the double quotes every time, so I'm just gonna press Control D and in Visual Studio it just duplicates your line immediately. Alright. Also, I'm gonna put a dollar sign in front of this one. It's part of the string builder in C sharp. So I can say here my int equals and I can do brackets or curly braces and say my int. And then I'm gonna enter a couple times here. I'm also gonna say this keeps the console from closing after executing code. Press a key to exit, and then to keep. So that when you run this, if you don't put a console dot read line, it'll automatically close the console after running all your code. So let's save. <coughs> I'm gonna press F5 and run it. Let's see what we got. Here we go. You can say this is my C sharp program my int equals 10, press any key to exit. There you go. You've ran your first C Sharp application and declared your own variable and printed it out to the console. Let's go ahead and do this for all the ones that we did earlier. So I'm gonna just come up here and press Control D. Instead of my int, it's gonna be my double. Just gonna copy paste this over and keep going. My long. Along we did the float. And then it was the Boolean. Is YouTube cool? And we did it. Camel case. Next up is the char. My char. My char. Then last one, my string. My string. All right, control save and press F5 or quick start up here. All right, so here we are. We're printing out your int, your double, your long, the float, the boolean, the char, and the string. And then press any key to exit. That's the read line. So pretty straightforward. Um, to declare variables in C-sharp and print them out to a screen console. Please subscribe and like if you enjoyed. We'll see you guys later.